Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to the School of the Spirit. The School of the Spirit in Oak House Church is popularly known as the Sunday School. Kindly join us as we dig deep into the Word of God this morning. How, how to enter into the rest. How to enter into the rest of God. How to enter into the rest of God, and we take our scriptures from the book of Hebrews, chapter number four, verses nine and ten. And he says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There is a rest to the people of God. He said, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. So there is what the Bible calls the rest of God, and that rest of God is for the people of God. God wants us to rest. There is what is called the rest of God. And that rest, according to the scripture, is meant for specific kind of people, unique kind of people. And these kind of people are God's own people. And so we start by looking at what is rest. Rest is... Um, A situation, physically speaking, a rest is a situation where you are relaxed. You are not doing any work. You take a break. You are at peace. You are not worried. You are not bothered. You keep away from the regular routine or daily routine, or monthly routine of your work. You take a leave. Sometimes people travel, they say they want to go for a rest or a break. That is, you walk and walk and walk and walk, and then you get, it gets to a point where you stop walking, and then you take a leave, you take a break. You go and refreshing yourself. You are not walking you are not worried about anything. You are not thinking about anything that has to do with work that will put pressure on you. You are free from worries and from problems that comes with work. That is one side about rest. Another way you want to, you, you can look at it again is when somebody is sleeping, you are lying down on your bed. Maybe you are not sleeping, but you are relaxed. You are not doing anything. You are not going anywhere. You are just lying down and resting your body. And sometimes you doze off and sleep. 
And when you are sleeping, if the rain is falling, you will not notice. <clears throat> if the house is burning, you will not notice. If something is smelling in the kitchen or in the sitting room, you will not notice. If people are making noise or talking downstairs, you are upstairs, you, are, you don't know. The reason is because you are asleep. You are cut off from all the worries and all the activities and all the problems within that you're surrounded. You are out of that environment. That is what rest is all about. Jesus said, All you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God for he that is entered into his rest. You are not walking. When you are at rest, you are not walking, you are not worried, you are not bothered, you are not perturbed. Whether the prices of things are going up or whether they are going down or whether they are flying right, left and center, it does not bother you. You are not worried. You are not. Just like he said in the book of Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, that is another man, a very good and perfect example of a man that is at rest. He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stall. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. This is a man that is at rest. Everything about his life, business and all of that. The day before yesterday, my former attendant I have in the farm in Ibado, they called me in the night around 10 o'clock. Because I have a farm you know, for leisure, not really for, because I have always loved fun. I have four ponds, fish pond, one, two, three, four. I put fish inside, there are fish inside. And he's sitting on about three acres. So, they said in the in a Ibado rain fell for three hours. So, because the farm is near a stream, why I located the farm there is because so that I can do fishing, rainy season and dry season. So dry season, you can just pump water from the stream. So rain fell. It brought down the walls because of the flood. That flood enters the farm, levels the farm. The house by the gate side, the, the security gate house, you know, the normal gate, they, there is a gate to the farm. The gate is, they, they showed me the water is up to this point. So the water has entered the fish pond. Pull, even the plantains everywhere and all of that, pull all of them down. The walls collapse, collapse all the way down. So the fish. He said, as he was talking to me, he was still raining uncontrollably. And so they had, thank God that the house, the main house is up. 
So they had to relocate and move off. So when they told me that, I remembered Habakkuk 3.17. I said they should make sure that they are safe. They should go to the upper house and relax and be cruising, that they shouldn't worry. That their, their life is more important than any other thing. So I began to bless God and thank God. I'm not worried. I'm not bothered. A lot of money has been invested and gone. You know, let us learn. Hmm? Let us learn to put into practice what we are being taught. Put it into practice. It is when you put it into practice, the promise of that obedience. Hmm? Because every obedience has a promise. The Bible says that through, He said, may grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of him who has called us and by whom we have received precious promises, precious promises through the word. Every word of God, every word of God you see in the Bible, it has a promise. And that promise becomes reality in your life at the moment of obedience, when you obey the blessing of that promise comes. But when you don't obey, the blessing of that promise will not come. So that is why you need to learn to enter into the rest which God has reserved for those of them that call upon his name. So you are not worried. You are not perturbed. The cares of this world, if they say take, that's why he said, when they come to you and they want to take your clothes, he said, give them the second. If they want one mile, he said, be ready to go with them for two miles or ten miles, as the case may be. Don't bother yourself. Leave the world, have your life. I'm not worried, I'm not bothered. I'm not even worried. Say, hey, hey, tomorrow now, nah, tomorrow is Monday. First thing tomorrow, uh, and then I will enter the car, and then I will start rushing, and all of that. I say, even tomorrow, I'm not going. Maybe sometime. Uh-huh. So in the process again, on Friday, I, I think my uh, Samuel now called and said that they are closing next week by Friday. I said, okay, I'm coming on Friday. Early in the morning on Friday, I will come. I'll come to the school, I'll pick you, and then I'll go to the farm and look at what happens in the farm, and then I'll come back. I told them, just see what you can do, and God is in control. Amen. Learn to enter into the rest of God. There is a rest. Let us read it again. There remain, can we read it together, please? There remained a rest. For he that is entered to his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, and has not did the promise. You see, that is when, when you enter into your rest, you are happy, you are relaxed, you are fulfilled. That is even when you can hear God. That's when you can hear God. Look at look at James one two, uh, James one twelve, James chapter one verse twelve. Look at what he said about the blessing that comes from obedience to 
Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Because what happened there now is the temptation. What I have just explained to you now is the temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, this life and in the life to come. So anything that you see has to do out implication. We must enter into, so that when, you see, when you enter into your rest, eh, for example, be, why this thing? Because what is going on today in the country that you and I are living is just funny. And there is no end. There is no end. Remember when the fuel, they increase the fuel. I told you that this fuel, when they increase it from 184 to, is it for something? Or I told you that that fuel is going to increase further. Now, it is 617, 620, 600 and whatever. It is still going up. It hasn't finished. You will get to a point in this country, this whatever, you're going to be seeing fuel 1,000 naira a liter. One, one naira to a pound. One pound is equivalent to 1,100 naira. So if you have 100 pounds now, how much is it? One, thousand, one pound is equivalent to 1,100. Let's say it's 1,000 naira. I mean, 1,000 one naira to one pound. So 100 pounds is how much? Can you imagine? It's still going up. And as it's going up, as a fuel, because energy is... What affects every man? Every no, every human being needs power in order to power your life. So once the money for the fuel increases, every other thing, the one that is selling potato, tomato, onions, all the thing, every, every single thing goes up. And you know, whenever something goes up, whenever things goes up, they never come down. How are you going to survive it? That is to say, you must learn how to enter into the rest that God has prepared for us who are Christians. Because this challenge, it doesn't matter whether you are a a Christian born again or not, whether you're a politician or not politician, whether you're from APC or whatever party you call yourself, every whether you are Yoruba, whether you are Muslim, is the same market you're going to go. Is the same thing that you're going to see. I want to say it again. Learn to enter into your rest. There is a rest reserved for the people of God. Just like God himself has entered into his own rest. Rest means you are not working. You don't wake up in the morning and prepare and then go to work and go through all the hustling and bustling of the Lagos life and all of that, through the traffic and all of that to get to the office and then you finish again stress of work back. You are not doing that. You are at rest. You are at home. You are relaxing. You are eating and drinking and you are just not bothered about anything. That's the rest. You have peace of mind. You're settled. Now, Let's look at the reason why people don't enter into their rest, into the rest that God prepared for. Why, why is it that they don't enter into this rest? 
Why is it that people always, they worry and they worry and they worry and they worry and they are cast down, their countenance is down, they are depressed, they are mourning, they are complaining, they are whining. Why is it so? The first reason The first reason is because they do not know the ways of God. The ways of God. He said it in the book of Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 3 verse 10 and 11. Hebrews 10 and Hebrews 3 10 and 11. He said, "Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. There is a way of God. God has a way of doing things. In Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9, he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your own thoughts. See, God's ways are not your ways. So because you don't know the ways of God, hmm? because you don't understand the modus operandi, the way God operates, the kind of thing, the way, the way he does his own things, because you don't know it, okay? So you, you, think, you think that the way you are thinking is the way God thinks. And you will not know that your own thinking is so highly limited. So the way you expect something to happen, even when you pray, you already calculated how that prayer is going to be answered, how what is going to happen and all of that. And then you now wait and that thing didn't happen the way you expected it. Then he tried again, it didn't happen that same way. You get, you give up. Do you know why the children of Israel did not believe in Jesus Christ? Because God promised that there was going to be a Messiah. He's going to send a Messiah. Guess how the Messiah came? Guess from where he came? From Nazareth. When they told Philip that, Philip told his brother and he said, I have seen the Messiah. He said, Go on, can anything good come out of man? He is Nazareth. He said, in the other place, the Pharisee, he said, go and read, check your Bible, check your scriptures. Can you see anything, anything good coming out from Nazareth? There is nothing, he said, no. So they don't expect the Messiah to come from there. So they were expecting the Messiah to come from a well, you know, noble family, rich, and all of that, affluence. But God did it. He said, look at your calling, brethren. Not the high and the mighty. God's own way, he said that I choose those things that are weak. That's the, the, the ones that I choose. So if I want to recruit people now, I'm not going to recruit people who are professors and doctors and engineers and lawyers and all of that. I'm not going to go for them. But if you want to recruit people now, you're going to go for the best talent. You see the ways of God. That is why the ways of God, they look so stupid. If you are praying now for God to, to, to help you to love, to, to the grace to love and all of that, if you pray that prayer now, eh, the way God will answer, you know, when you ask God, fill me with the, with the love of God and all of that, how do you expect God to answer that prayer? Can somebody tell me? It will give you a trouble, a stupid and stubborn person. 
it will give you a stubborn person, a very difficult person to deal with. Hey, does it make sense? But that is the ways of God. He said these people err because they don't know his ways. So if you don't know the ways of God, the Bible says concerning Moses, he said Moses, he said the children of Israel, they knew the act, the power. They are interested in the power of God. He said, but Moses knew his ways. You are asking God to have you prayed to God to give you grace for patience. You know how he answer you that prayer? He will give you a problem that you have to exercise that patience, long suffering. He will give it, he will bring it to you. You see, when you ask, when you pray prayer, asking God, God immediately he will answer that prayer. You think he, you think he delays, he's, uh, he is not true. He answered the prayer. But the way you're expecting that prayer, the answer to come, you won't even be looking in that direction. But that is it. Once you pray it, it won't before you finish saying amen. He has, uh, have you seen one day you just finish praying in, the, uh, in your bedroom and you know you worship God, you worship God and say, God, uh, in fact, uh, my, you are, you, you are. I'm in love with you. In fact, God, you know, he now finished. You are feeling the presence of God and all of that. He said, honey, you're your wife. You hug, you, hug. you now enter the car. You, to, 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 the car starts. As you are coming out of the road and all of that, somebody just bash your car. You finish worshiping and praying and all of that. You come and somebody hits you. Won't you say is this? Won't you say is devil? Won't you say it is the devil? Is it not? But it's not the devil. The ways of God. <laughs> if you don't know the, that is why. Can you see the reason why he now said, in everything, give what? You understand why he said, in everything, give thanks to God. Because all things work together for good to them that love him, to them who are called according to his purpose. The reason why people do not enter into their rest is because they lack the knowledge of the ways of God. If you don't know the ways of God, you can never enter into his rest. Like it happened to her when her brother died. He, he, he said he was even trying, he was questioning God. And God said in the Isaiah, He said, Nobody knows why the righteous die or why the righteous perish. You don't know why the righteous perish. And God answered that way. For, I think it's in Isaiah 58, where he said, doesn't know, no one knows 57, 1 to 3. 57, 1 to 3. He said, no one knows why the righteous perish. He's a righteous man. The righteous perish, and no man layeth it to heart. He said, and the merciful men are taken away None considering that the righteous is taken away from what? From the evil to come. God will not allow because he knows that when that evil comes, he's going to overcome you because you don't have the capacity to be able to, you have not developed to that point. Because, but because you are supposed to have gotten to that point, when you need, when you ought to be teachers, you still have need to be taught. So when there, because everything that God is doing with you, is doing with a program, God has a program. 
So when you are supposed to be here, God is going to be dealing with you. The things that are going to be happening to you are coming your way and all of that is based on the position where you are actually supposed to be. So when he finds out that you are not able to take that thing that is coming to you, and he's going to lose you to the devil, to hell, you know what he does? He waits for that opportunity when you are okay and all of that, he takes you home to a better place. That is a love because God loves that person more than you love the person. Okay, would you have preferred the person staying back and getting involved in this problem and that problem overcomes him? And then you are going to, maybe it is sickness or maybe accident or something happened and then you start running around and raising money and all of that and then spend all the money that you have. Maybe it is a police case. Maybe the person now was framed for armed robbery or whatever and they are carrying him from one clique to another clique and you are raising money, paying lawyers, running from one police station to another, from one court to another, from one judge to another and all of that and you spent all your money. At the end of the day, the person, ended up dying which one is better the air because they don't know the ways of God and if you don't know the ways of God you can't enter into your rest worry problems depression every time About you concern about what people say and what they didn't say, what did they what they think or what they didn't think. That's what you are going to concern yourself with, and that's how you are going to continue living your life. You will hear from God. You won't get direction from God. So that's number one. I doubt if we can finish this today, but if we don't have the time, I'll just mention it for you. Is that okay? So that you can remember anytime we're going to ask. Do quiz. It's going to cover from the one that we did from the first day. Another reason why they could not enter into the arrest is because of uh, unbelief. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Hebrews, 11, Hebrews 3, 11 and 12. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of what? Unbelief is an what unbelief is different from double mind. Somebody has a double mind. Another one has unbelief. What is unbelief? I don't believe in Jesus Christ. It's different from double mind. I don't know whether, I'm not sure whether he is truly the son of God or he's not the son of God. It's a different bargain when you don't believe in Oak House Church at all, at all. You don't even want anybody to talk about it. It's a different thing again when you don't know whether this Oak House Church, whether they are real or not. You are not sure. So their problem here now is unbelief. They don't believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. The Bible says if they had known, they didn't know, it was unbelief. If they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. God, that they didn't know. That's why they crucified him. If they knew that he was the Messiah, they wouldn't try it. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Which none of the princes of this world knew. They didn't know. Ignorance, unbelief. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see what unbelief does. Unbelief is as a result of ignorance.
That is why people are destroyed because of ignorance, because of lack of knowledge. If you are being destroyed, that is you are going through all kinds of all kinds of problems in life as a result of ignorance. It is what you don't know that is killing you. The day you know that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that is the Savior, and then you put your trust and all of that in. So ignorance, unbelief. 18, verse 18, Hebrews chapter 3, 18. <clears throat> Hebrews 3, 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that do not, that do what? That do not believe. That is, they don't believe it. Unbelief. They do not believe. Unbelief. They don't believe it. Not that they are doubting. They don't believe it at all. 19. So we see that they could not enter into, they could not enter in because of what? They could not enter into what? Into the rest for the people of God. They could not enter into the rest of God because of unbelief. They have no knowledge of it. They don't, even some of us don't, even some of us here. We don't even know that there is anything that you can live a life of rest, that you can be at rest. We don't even know that there is... You see, Habak, that Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, so it has not even done all. We just flip through it. We just hear it. It's like a fairy story. But there are people who are experiencing it, living, and when you see them, they are easy to go. They are not worried. They are not cantankero. They are very pleasant. Everything is working out. You know, we are talking about Pastor, I mean, uh, uh, Pastor Bile Akane. I don't know whether you've known that man. When you see that kind of a person, if you want to attend his program, if he's organizing a program now you want to attend, you go and book. This is 2023. This is 2023. Maybe he's having a, his annual or yearly program. He want to attend. The one, there was a time we wanted to uh, attend the program. They said, if you want to attend, you are going to book your whatever will be in the next two years. That's when you have space to attend. Because the place is filled. So if you see Bule, Bule Akane, now, if you see him, you know that in the Bible says concerning Jesus, there is no beauty that anyone will appreciate him. There's nothing, if you see him, if you see the clothes he wears, this thing, he can, this thing, he wear this thing is, uh, is, is gold. He see wear Ankara, the normal Ankara and all of that. He washes his clothes by himself. His clothes, the one he wears, he washes it by himself. Don't we have uh, house helps? The one, some of you have the one that does cooking. You have the one that does washing and dry cleaning. Then you have the one that cleans the house. Then you have the one that cleans your, you know, you have different types of them. <laughs> different, people, they different too. You can live this life. Eh? You can live. You can live here. You can live heaven in this life. You can experience heaven here. You are worried about, and then you compare yourself with other people, and then eh, nothing is working for me, and then you are angry with God. Eh, this one is a eh, hey, hey, hey. catastrophe, katakata for your head. When is it going to end? And under that condition, you can't hear from God. God will never reach out to you. You cut off from Him. He said, He said, the just shall live by faith. And if any man draws back, my soul does not have pleasure. You cut off. God, you are you're on your own. You've you've 
cut God off in your life. So you are, you worry about everything. If I uh, if I worry, eh? if I worry, I'm just worrying about <coughs> my brethren. That I was just concerned about this this scarcity. I mean, this uh, prices of things that are soaring high. How is the, how are the brethren going to cope? Because there are those of them who don't know, who have not come to a point where they can experience this. So how are you going to? We need to help the weak. That's my concern. That's my worry. Not, not, I'm not worried about what to eat, about what to wear. I was telling them, he was, who was, um, I think, I don't know whether it's Ibuku or yesterday. I said, the Mercedes car, the fuel capacity, the tank is 150 liters. So if I want to fill it up now at the present fuel price, it's going to cost me 90,000 Naira to fill that tank. And when you fill it up, that is, they open your water, they put fuel. That's putting fuel inside the tank. That means it is 90,000 naira. And then when you fill it up, you drive it within it won't, it won't one week. That means it is, let's say five days. You drive it five days, it's finished. Then you buy another one. So in, in one month, 90 times four. So it would take you 360,000 Naira to put fuel in that car to drive for one month. That's what, 360,000 is what you are going to use to settle somebody for life. You put it inside fuel. Am I going to have a headache? No. If I don't have money to put fuel, I pack it. It is safe. If God wants me, he will, he will supply my needs. Let us consider, let us stay, let us do what he wants us to do. You see, it is about practical. It is putting into practice. You remember what happened during the COVID? The COVID, you know this thing that we say, church, church, Christian, Christian, I'm born again, I'm born again, and all of that is by mouth. His mouth is not here. When there is an outbreak now, you say COVID has come down and everybody, they will tell you it's a social distancing. You wash your hand, you cover your nose. And then people bought helmets and cover their heads. And then when they want to greet you, they will be doing like this. And inside the church, and you see the pastor is on the pulpit, he covers himself with whatever, and he's preaching. And you are a Christian. And, you are, and then you are praying. What are we doing? And somebody asked, if Jesus Christ was to be the pastor during that COVID, will you, do you think he will cover his... Uh, he said yes. He said he will cover. There are Christians and there are Christians. They are not the same. I don't know where you belong. Hebrew chapter 13, uh, Hebrew chapter 3, verse 13. Another reason why they could not enter into their rest. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of what? Sin. You will not know peace. You will not enter into your rest. Sin is a fragrant, a fragrant disobedience to the commandment of God. 
He's flouting God's commandment, flouting God's order arbitrarily with reckless abandon. He that no way to do good and does not do it, you know what is right thing to do, but you refuse to do it. You can never enter the rest of God. That's why, see, you know, I have said this several times. You know what I used to do? Recently, I did it, I think, I did that three days or four days ago. I just sat down and I asked myself again this question. I said, me and God, who is wiser? I have to answer that question by myself. I asked myself the question, Fred and God, who is wiser? I say, God is wiser than me. So who do I trust, God or Fred? I say, I must trust God. I said, why should I trust God? He said, because everything that he says, you can bet your life on it. So I say, Fred, you see, it is high time you forgot everything about you and try anything that you see him say, anything that you hear him say. You like it, oh, I don't like it, oh, I feel good about it, oh, he does, I don't feel good about it, oh, he pleases me, oh, he doesn't please me, oh, it is not a mad issue. As long as God has said it, if I found out that that is what God said, I am in for it. It has helped me. And I've told you how you, how you, how you turn on the power of God in your life. How you turn on the grace of God in your life. How you turn on the ability of God in your life. How you turn on the blessings of God in your life. How you activate the resources of God in your life is at the point of obedience. Not at the point of praying. It is at the point of obedience. If you have not obeyed it, you are not going to experience anything. And because you have not obeyed it, God is not going to tell you anything further. You see, the reason why people don't hear from God, they don't get direction. Even when you pray for God to lead you and all of that, he won't. He won't answer the question. You know the reason? Because the one he told you, you have not done it. So he's not going to tell. How can he tell you? Will you tell the person? You told somebody to come and, uh, 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 come and sweep the place, sweep the church and all of that before the service will start. And then after that, I will tell, I will, when the time comes, you're going to do X, Y, Z. And then you come to church. The person has not swept the church. The church is unswept. And then you now tell the person, you give the person the next assignment to do. He, the person now comes and be asking you, okay, so um, how are we going to do this in, uh, after the service? How do we organize the water? The, the sweeping he told you to do, he hasn't done it. And then he's asking you how... You will not answer the person. God will not answer you until you have obeyed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 tells us, until your obedience is what? Complete. If it is not, God will not answer you. You pray, he won't hear, you won't hear him anything. For God who commanded like, I say 2 Corinthians chapter Second Corinthians 10, 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when what is happened? If you obedience, if you are for not a job, forget that you are wasting. You see, that's why what I do with my life and God is I just try to find out what God says for me to do. You for principles. You can predict the life of a person who by observing the principles by which that person lives. 
see it a man that is diligent, you can predict the outcome of that person. Anyway, let me, like I said, because it's time, let me, are you online? Okay, okay. So even if we do maybe a little five minutes late. Okay, the next one, let me just mention them. How many have I mentioned? I mentioned three. The third one is sin. Practicing sin. The next one is those who are at ease in Zion. You know what it means to be at ease in Zion? They're not doing anything. They are members of the body of Christ. You are a church member. What do you do in the church? I just worship my God. How do you worship your? What is your part? What part do you play? There's nothing you play, no part you play in the church. The problem, stay. You see that rest, you cannot enter inside it. You see that peace. Rest is not defined in the absence of trouble. Rest is defined in the presence of trouble, in your, your, your state of mind, when there is trouble, when problem shows up, when there is difficulties and all of that, it is the state of, that's where you define what rest is. That's how we know who is at rest. Not somebody who is, you know, everything is working out for you, you know, your business is moving, and then uh, you have a large, a very big bank account. You fly in, you fly out. Everybody, things are moving well and all of that, you are at peace. That's not the one we are talking about. And when we talk about rest, not rest from work, it is rest in work. That is when issues are showing up. So, for those of us, I have preached about service. Service, 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 service. So you finish talking, people choose how they want to live their life. So they see it is not by force, it's by choice. Service will, service to God, service to God will guarantee generation, uh, generational blessing. You know this generational blessing? It comes through service. That is, you leave blessing for your generation and for your family, for the next generation upon generation upon generation. It is through service. The way to the top is through service. If you choose not to serve, so be it. Anyway, I have flogged about that service and flogged it and flogged it, and, and, but it can never be overflogged. If you don't serve God, you will never see peace. You will never experience it. The peace that passes all understanding, you will never experience. The rest that the Bible is talking about, the rest of God, you will not enter into that rest. Because Jesus said, if you are not gathering with me, what are you doing? You cannot be scattering and say you are at peace with him. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So if you don't want to serve God, keep those, run your life. Live you where you want to live. Do whatever you want to do. However, when you feel like you can come and show your face, and then after showing your face, you go back again and call. Whatever you choose to do, just go ahead and do it. Nobody's going to force you. Nobody's going to. That's one thing good I like about church. And God has said in the book of Malachi, he said a time will come when there will be a distinction between those who serve me and those who don't serve me. If you are a Sunday, Sunday church student, 
Now you sabi. What I owe anyone, what I, Fred, owe any man on earth is to love you. And to love you is to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Irrespective of how you want to intimidate me with your looks. You can't intimidate me. The reason why you cannot intimidate me is because I don't depend on you to feed me. And I have chosen to live. If I have, I wear. If I don't have the one that I'm wearing, I can wear this one for the rest of the year. Next Sunday, you see me, I will wear it. If those who are watching me online are saying, ah, pastor, he's always wearing, then buy another one and give me. If you buy, give me, I will wear it. If you don't give me, I will continue wearing this one. It won't bother me. If you let it wash, I will wear it. Let me see the day I will wear it. You say, pastor, get out of this pulpit because what you are wearing is the, your, the, your clothes. I'm not saying that your clothes is dirty, but it has worn out. I should leave the, I will not leave. If you don't like it, buy another one, give me. This one that I'm wearing, somebody bought it and gave me. Apparently, the person has seen the one that I'm wearing, he doesn't like it. <laughs> the one I wore last week, somebody bought it. Apparently, he saw the ones I was wearing before. He said, he is an indirect way of telling me, Pastor, stop wearing this one. I got the message, so I wore it. So if you don't like it, so me, if you leave me, I will wear this thing. Woman or no woman, whether I'm a woman or a man, I will wear the same clothes. I will wear it and come. Heaven will fall. And I will preach again. God will bless and anoint the blood. And the people will be like, it doesn't matter. Another reason why people don't enter into their rest is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says that we are God's workmanship, created unto God, unto good works, which God had before you were born, ordained. You know what he said to Jeremiah? Before, before you were born, I do what? Before you were conceived inside your mother's womb, and ordained you a prophet unto nations. Now, now Jeremiah is now finally born. They gave birth to Jeremiah, and the Jeremiah now decided that he's going to be a businessman. And he goes into business, or he pursues career. Will he enter the rest of God? Will he be satisfied and fulfilled in life? What if he fasts? If, what if he continues fasting for fasting five times a week, like some of our, some of us do? Every every week he fasts five times. He does dry. Will he solve the problem? Will you, so you are looking at me because, you, you, <laughs> because I'm hitting you below the bed. Let me ask you a question. If you are set now that you want to go to, you are going to, you are going to travel to Onicha. You know the road to Onicha. You know how you get to Onicha now? So you go to that uh, park, enter bus that is going to Onicha. They will carry you. Then instead of you going to enter bus that takes you to Onicha, and then you enter the one now that is carrying you to Badagri. From Bada, after Badagri, which one, which country, which um, Kotonu, and then you are going to Kotonu, and when they ask you, say is Onicha, you are going to. Will that road lead you to Onicha? What if you decide? If what if you say, um, actually, because I have gone so far, let me just continue. I'll somehow, 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 I will get to Onicha. Will you somehow, somehow get to Onicha? You are out of course, my brother. You will never get there. So what is the solution? Do what? Make a U-turn. 
and start going the opposite direction. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. See, this is the way me, I think. You know, I think a lot. I think, I think more than I pray. I think more than I read the Bible. I think. So it is in the process of the, when I think this way, I make my decision. And when I make that decision, I stick to it. And I, I, that is when I now pray, God, help me to be able to do this. That will now concentrate, that will be the concentration of my prayer. Another reason why people don't enter their rest quickly is lack of prayer. James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Remember what we define rest to be. Rest is absence of worries and pains and trouble and all those whatever. Now the Bible says, from when cometh wars and fightings among you, somebody who is worrying and fighting, will he enter into a rest? So why are you fighting and quarreling? Come they not ten, hence. He said, even of your loss that you wore in that war in your members. Verse 2, he says, verse 2, please, we are late. Please, so we can. You lost and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not. Why? Because you have not prayed. Because you don't like prayer. Prayerlessness, you will never enter the rest of God if you don't pray. Then the last one, the last one is praying amiss. Verse 3. And the last one, the seventh reason why you don't enter, the, the sixth one is because you don't pray. The seventh one is that when you pray, you pray, oh devil, enough is enough. Satan, enough is enough. If I'm giving you warning. Enough is enough. You've harassed me so much. Because the other day, the pastor was saying that you've been harassing people. And I'm telling you, enough is enough. You're laughing. Somebody, will, somebody prays this kind of prayer. In the church, I pastored in Abuja. And he was say, Satan, even in praying, he said, Satan, enough is enough. Satan, enough, I can't take it anymore, Satan. <laughs> Is it not some, didn't you hear my wife, the testimony he gave, the, the, where the plane we entered, the thing started uh, misbehaving and trying to somersault the plane. And then somebody began to pray in that condition. He said, I'll possess my possession. I'll possess my possession. That's prayer is praying under that condition. I will possess my possession. Praying are miss. I don't have the time to deal with all this. So this is it. You know? And um, let me mention for you, because I'm not going to do that because of time. How may we enter into the rest of God? So that according to Job chapter 22, when the, the Bible said, when there is a casting down, we shall say there is a lifting. So it doesn't bother us. How may we come into that state? One is having absolute trust in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 26 verse 16. And another one is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. You have to do this. The second thing that you need to do if you want to enter into the rest of God is that you must learn to seize from your own work because God stopped his own. You must know, you must come to the point where it is, you know that it is not by might or power. It's not just by saying it with your mouth. It's 
You hear Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus said, all that you hear me say, all that you see me do, they are not my works, it's my father's work. The words that I'm saying, it, they are not my own, no. it is God, no. it's my father that is saying it to. I'm just here for the sake of just being here. What you are seeing today is God. He is God and nothing more. Where they say, blessed is the, the, the breast that suck. He say, don't say, stop it. It is God that everything is about God. You must learn it is not by might or by power. It's not because you have labored. It's not because you have prayed. It has nothing to do with your fasting. It's God that gave the increase or gives the increase. If he doesn't bring the, you can go to the farm and labor and labor and labor. At the end of the day, you have nothing to show for it. If the harvest does not come, your labor is wasted. It's God that gives that harvest. It's God that gives you the strength to even go to do the work. The third one is that you must learn. Learn Christ. Learn his ways. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, all you that carry burden and worries and pains and sorrows and depressions and all of that, come and learn from me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. Verse 29, it says, learn of me. The key to that rest is that you must learn of it. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The yoke of learning, that yoke is the yoke of learning his ways. Learning who God is. Learn Christ. Learn his ways. Because his ways are not your ways. We err because we don't know his ways. And then the final one. You know, Isaiah showed you Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. He says, his ways are higher than your ways. Your thoughts are different from our thoughts. Then the fourth one is, uh, you have to have an absolute trust in the word of God. Paul said, I commend you to God and to his word that is able to build you up and offer you your inheritance among them that are sanctified. Praise the Lord. I will take two minutes. I will do a summary. Two minutes summary of all that I have said. For those of you who are coming late. I said, the, what we are discussing today is how to enter into the rest. The Bible tells us that there is a rest for the people of God. And I said that rest is a situation where you are, even though the fig tree does not blow some, things are won every problem here and there. But somebody looks at you and he will think that you are something different. You are a different person. Because you are not bothered about what is going on and you are not perturbed about the uprisings and all of that. You are at peace with yourself at all times. You are not bothered. And then, why are people not entering into their rest? Because there is a rest for the people of God. Why are people not entering into that rest? You can experience heaven on earth while you are here today. You can't. There are people who are living that kind of life. I gave you an example like uh, past, um, uh, Paul, um, Billy Akeni, and there are many, many uncountable num number of them. I told you the story about my farm. They called me two days ago by nine o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock in the night and all of that. I said that the, the rain fell for the, almost the whole day for three hours cons constantly. You know, and all of that. And the fence of the farm fell down and because the farm was near, is near the stream. And the water entered into the farm, leveled everywhere. I have four fish ponds and there are fishes inside. And then the water carried the whole fish out. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. So what do you do? Am I bothered? And all? I didn't have sleep. I went, immediately I finished talking with her and all of that about the situation. I forgot about it. I slept up. I woke up in the morning. My concern is prayer. But there was a song, music that was playing. I, I didn't even remember. 
I've forgotten about it. I'm not worried, I'm not bothered. So if you want to enter into the rest of God, there are things you must do and there are things you must not do. To enter into the rest of God is a choice. Hello? It is what? How many of you want to enter into the rest of God? Then do this. It's about what you do. It's not just about, don't just be the hearer of the word, but what? The doers, if you want your life to be blessed. Thank you.